So my name is Dan Strauss, and I work for the Nature Conservancy. Um, and I work specifically for a program within the Nature Conservancy called LEAP, Leaders in Environmental Action for the Future. And I'm education manager for that program. And as part of my presentation today, I will go into some of the uh, specifics about that program. Um, but mostly this presentation will focus on some work that we've been doing, some initiatives that we've started around curriculum development, um, and then specifically uh, an anthology that we put together of uh, high school level uh, urban environmental education curriculum. Um, but just to get started, uh, just to give a little bit of background of, uh, in terms of what led up to the point where we developed this anthology, um, I just want to sort of back up and, and sort of take a broader view. Um, the Nature Conservancy is the world's largest conservation organization. It started in 1951. Um, we are all over the world. We're in 35 countries. We have a million members and 700 staff scientists on the ground doing uh, conservation work. Uh, in a nutshell, the Nature Conservancy or TNC, I'll, I'll refer to it, uh, throughout the presentation as TNC. Uh, our mission is very, very simple. It's to protect the lands and waters upon which all life depends. So we're doing that work all over the world, um, protecting land so that the animals and plants and people that live in those uh, places have healthy ecosystems and healthy resources. Um, so then to help meet that mission goal of the, of the larger organization, um, a few youth initiative programs uh, started. And the first one, which is the one I work for, which is called LEAF, Leaders in Environmental Action for the Future, um, was the first uh, youth initiative program. Now we have another one called Nature Works Everywhere, which was started a few years ago uh, and focuses mostly on middle school curriculum. And I'll talk a little bit about that later on. But just to talk briefly about LEAF, um, so again, Leaders in Environmental Action for the Future, the program was started in, in 1995 as a partnership program between the Nature Conservancy and a brand new school in New York City <clears throat> called the High School for Environmental Studies. And the High School for Environmental Studies was really one of the first of its kind, which is an urban high school that was using uh, environmental topics and issues as its sort of magnet theme. Um, and it featured not only a very strong science program that had courses in environmental science, but also uh, courses throughout the school curriculum and, and discipline. Um, and, and was figuring out ways to incorporate those themes into the social sciences, foreign language classes, math, uh, really across the curriculum uh, board. So the Nature Conservancy was really struck by what the school was trying to do, and they started this program called, called LEAF. And the idea here was that the Nature Conservancy would offer summer internships for students to go out and do conservation work on uh, Nature Conservancy-owned land, and then be able to apply what they're learning in their schools uh, to the work that they did in the field, and vice versa, be able to apply what they were doing in the field to, the, uh, to their uh, educational work back at school. So the mission was, was really straightforward. We wanted to inspire uh, tomorrow's conservation leaders. Uh, we found that um, the conservation movement, the leaders in the conservation movement were, were getting a little older. Uh, there wasn't a lot of diversity and we wanted to address those issues. Uh, we also thought it was important because youth were you know, continuously and, and increasingly alienated from that landscape. More and more people were living in urban areas. So uh, we thought that that was important important piece to the overall conservation puzzle. Um, the model was also simple. We, we felt that the internship um, supplemented the classroom learning and vice versa, as I mentioned. And we also wanted to be able to involve the, uh, the teachers at the school in uh, the curriculum development. Um, and of course, the students benefited because they were able to live, work, and play in the natural world for four weeks in the summer. And along the way, they were able to consider college and career options. Uh, because we really tried to follow up with them after they did the internship to help them uh, with those next steps. So uh, as part of that program, students go off and they work in nature preserves across the country. Uh, this year we'll be sending students off 30 uh, states and they're there for four weeks and they, they work 
in a youth conservation project. It's a paid internship, <clears throat> very competitive um, wage for, for a, a youth summer program. And again, we target urban youth from populations uh, largely underrepresented in the conservation movement. And, um, and by doing so, the LEAF program is, is really training and developing the next generation of conservation leaders. So it's been a really, really successful program. And uh, it's grown. So now we don't only work with the high school for environmental studies, but we partner with uh, over 25 environmentally themed high schools across the country. Uh, and we're actually going to be growing to 30 schools um, this year. Uh, all of these schools have that same mission. Uh, they are trying to incorporate an environmental theme while at the same time meeting high academic standards and preparing their students well for state exams and an overall um, you know, very solid, rigorous academic four years and to help them get into uh, college. Um, I just want to highlight a couple of these schools um, because they are very, very unique and they're doing some amazing things and they deserve uh, the spotlight a little bit. Uh, one school is called Common Ground High School in New Haven, Connecticut. Uh, and their mission is to cultivate habits of healthy living and sustainable, sustainable environmental practice among a diverse population. So their school is located right in New Haven, um, right next to the state park. It's part of a larger organization called the New Haven Ecology Project. It also houses an environmental education center and a farm. Another school that we have in the uh, network is the Science and Math Institute in Tacoma, Washington, where uh, they're able to provide an integrated inquiry-based curriculum combining arts, science, math, and environmental and marine studies. Uh, the Environmental Charter High School out in Los Angeles, uh, which prepares students for college using the environment as a lens for real-life learning. All these schools are, are tucked within urban settings, some uh, right in the heart of, you know, like an urban real city neighborhood and others kind of on the outskirts, uh, but they all serve a diverse population um, and are doing really amazing work in terms of incorporating really unique ways of using the environment as a theme to the school. Not, you know, not so much the traditional tried and true um, environmental um, ideas, but some really neat stuff that I'm going to talk about a little bit later. So after we, we had a few schools in the network, uh, we thought that it was not only important to be pulling students from the schools for the internship program, but to develop a network for the teachers at the school. Um, as we became a national program, you know, we really saw the value in having these teachers Get to, get to know each other and get to work together and share best practices because they're all trying to do the same thing. Uh, and many of the same challenges are coming up for them state to state. And, you know, it's one of those things where when you know someone else is out there struggling to meet the same challenges you are, and, uh, you know, it's just exciting to know that these folks are out there and it's great to get to meet them and get to work with them. So, we started this network, which is what I, that's the primary thing that I do is manage this network um, for that sole purpose, really, to get this group working together and sharing what they're doing and learning together. And we feature a yearly educators retreat each summer. And we invite teachers from all of our schools to come out together and learn together and actually develop curriculum together. They get together, they, they work in small teams, uh, and they're really, really excited because they find that, um, this is just not something they get to do during the school year. They really get together with teachers from other disciplines and develop curriculum. So out of that came an idea that, well, what if we took sort of, you know, the best of what our teachers are doing at their school and put it into one place, give it a home. So we developed what we call the LEAF Anthology of Urban Environmental Education. And we reached out to all of our schools to contribute a lesson that they thought really met the, the theme of the anthology, the mission of LEAF, and the mission of their school. So it's a book, and it's also online. This is what I'm going to talk about mostly today. Um, and it's a collection of lessons and projects and activities that um, that really try to address environmental issues, but in a unique way by, by looking at it through the lens of city. Uh, 
Their lessons are interdisciplinary. They were peer reviewed by other teachers. Uh, and also we were able to do a very unique thing, which was have Nature Conservancy Science uh, review these lessons as well. Not only for science accuracy, but also for, um, they actually contributed ideas to the lesson in some cases, which was really cool. You know, they saw opportunities for where a lesson could go in a direction that would incorporate a conservation topic really uh, interestingly, or, hey, here's a way that this could not only address this issue, but this other issue too, which the teacher may not have thought about, and in a way that, again, looks at um, the issue through the lens of city. So this took, you know, this took a long time to put together. My, my job was to, was to vet the lessons that came through. Um, kind of search for the best ones, spend some time with them. I, I, I was a teacher for 15 years myself and a curriculum developer and a, a science team leader. So I was able to, uh, what I was charged with doing was to really um, come to a place where they could be the best that they could be, um, whittle down to the ones that we thought were the strongest, and then um, you know edit them and get them all together and, and get them into a form that would be really useful for teachers. And uh, again, the reasoning behind the anthology was that we really felt it filled a niche. Um, we, we know that there are many, many environmental education curriculum resources out there, but we found that there were not too many focusing on cities. We also wanted this to be by teachers and for teachers. So we, we really wanted it to be lessons that were written by teachers on the ground, as opposed to um, folks who you know work for um, organizations that do curriculum development. We have a few lessons in the anthology uh, from those kinds of organizations, but mostly we have lessons that are by our teachers and they've used the lessons and they use them every year. Uh, we also wanted the lessons to be able to um, apply skills students are developing in their core classes by addressing real world issues of environmental conservation and sustainability. So we felt that there could be a really great marriage between uh, the need to address core academic skills and incorporate environmental themes uh, in these lessons. It didn't have to be one or the other, which I think sometimes is what teachers run into as problem areas is that they think, how can I, how can I do all these things I want to do and also teach all the core stuff I have to teach and get my students ready for their state exam? you know, the tests, and uh, we just feel like one accentuates the other. If, uh, if they're done really well and a lot of attention is, is paid to uh, learning standards and so forth, there's no reason that a student can't be having a really great out-of-classroom out of learning experience that also helps them uh, prepare for everything else that they're working on and, and help develop skills in their core classes. So um, the topics of the anthology range from sort of the, again, sort of the more traditional environmental education topics like ecology and biodiversity, pollution and natural resources. But we also want to take it into kind of a unique direction where we also looked at things like community and neighborhood, um, urban planning, environmental justice, and finding the threads that go between all of these topics together. So a lesson that maybe combines ecology and environmental justice or urban planning and resources. Um, we thought that was a neat way to kind of attack this. And those are kind of the topics that we wanted to address when we started looking for lessons. So as I mentioned, the anthology is also online. We, we have hard copies of the book that we give to our schools that are in our network um, for them to use. But any teacher anywhere can access the lesson by visiting nature.org slash leaf anthology. And the lessons are all uh, available as downloadable PDFs for free. Um, the lessons are divided into what we call buckets. Um, the bu three, three buckets that we felt worked really well to divide the lessons were natural cities, human cities, and evolving cities. So natural cities kind of looking at more of the sort of straightforward ecology in cities, um, human cities, uh, looking at topics like people in communities, health, politics, environmental justice, population and culture, and evolving, evolving cities looking at, um, you know, topics like resources, infrastructure, urban history, the forces that made cities and the future of cities and the built environment. 
And then once you click on a bucket, you get a handful of lessons that address the theme of that bucket. So here are some from the evolving cities bucket. And again, you can see that some of the most of the lessons are contributed by schools in our network. And then a couple might be uh, contributed by an outside curriculum development organization that was kind enough and gracious enough to contribute a lecture to this anthology, uh, which was great. A lot of people were really supportive of this and wanted to contribute. We actually had to turn some lessons away because we were just, the anthology was just getting too big for its first, sort of its first, uh, its first run. So I just want to focus on a couple of lessons here to give you kind of an idea of uh, where we were going and how we're thinking. I, I obviously don't have time to go through all the lessons, but I picked a couple that I thought kind of are good representations of what's inside. Um, one is a lesson by uh, a gentleman named uh, Joel Tolman, who worked at the Common Ground High School in New Haven that I shared earlier. He was a teacher there. He's now part of their leadership team. And uh, this is called the Green Map Curriculum, and it addresses key academic skills while also investigating environmental justice concepts. Um, so it was, uh, it's really a set of activities that can be stretched as long as a unit or, or probably even a, uh, a semester, depending on how a teacher wanted to, um, wanted to use it. Um, it explores some of the key concepts and content from their environmental justice course. And again, it addresses some key skills like developing hypotheses, analyzing data, taking and defending a position that are relevant to both content areas. Um, the anthology uses these symbols for each lesson so a teacher can quickly know what topics are covered by this lesson. So this one addresses community and sustainability and justice. Uh, so the green map curriculum begins by uh, presenting students with the principles of environmental justice document, which is available online, and asks them to consider some key questions about that document. What are the main ideas? What questions do you have? And uh, what does environmental justice have to do with us? It then um, segues into the core activity after the first one, what is environmental justice? Um, it does a couple of mapping activities. The first one, is called Mapping Environmental Resources in Our City, where students use an in interactive green map, which is available online. Uh, many cities have a map like this. If they don't, a student, a, a teacher can use Google Maps in a creative way to try to have it do the same, uh, meet the same goal. And students find out if parts of the city are full of environmental resources while other parts are empty. So kind of looking at the map of their city in terms of socioeconomics and demographics, neighborhood to neighborhood, and locating where um, where resources are found, environmental resources, parks, green space, um, supermarkets that sell uh, organic food, uh, and and more healthy options for eating. You know, where are they located? Is there a trend? Is there a pattern to these things? Uh, and also looking at environmental hazards. Uh, is there a pattern to that as well in terms of neighborhood to neighborhood and socioeconomics? and demographics and so forth using something called scorecard.org, which is a website which allows a person to view maps of major polluters anywhere in the country. And then they, they culminate all that. Um, in, by the way, along the way, they develop hypotheses. So they, they develop a skill of forming a hypothesis uh, before they do their, um, their mapping research. And they take all that data and all everything that they've learned and then apply it in the last part, which is called pursuing justice, and students were able to share the result of their investigation while practicing their per persuasive arg argumentative writing skills and considering how to enact change. So you've got a lot of things going on here. You know, you've got straightforward science, looking at where resources are located, uh, city planning, looking at how a city develops itself in terms of its resources and green space and so forth. You've got your social science stuff happening. And you even have some English language arts uh, things for the end when students are able to develop uh, their writing skills and uh, tools of making um, arguments and so forth. We asked each teacher who submitted a lesson to write a paragraph uh, that we called urban relevant so that it would become, you know, so that it was obvious right away to a teacher why this lesson is unique to the idea of 
looking at environmental issues through the lens of city. So you can read here what, what this teacher wrote um, for this lesson, thinking about how, uh, although, you know, environmental justice problems happen all over the, all over the world and in all kinds of different uh, settings, cities are focal points because of the large disparity of available resources from neighborhood to neighborhood and the high populations of low-income residents and people of color. Um, becoming aware of how we perceive this in cities where we live, looking at the realities of environmental equity, forming opinions, and taking action are critical to everyone. So each lesson comes with that section. Um, I, I guess, Alex, you had mentioned earlier that you wanted me to make it okay if people wanted to ask a question along the way. So I just wanted to mention that to folks, if you do want to type a question in the chat box along the way, that's, that's totally great. Um, but if you wanted to wait until the very end, I know we have a Q&A um, time allotted at the end. So another lesson um, is from our school in Los Angeles, Environmental Charter High School, by a teacher, well, a former teacher named uh, Amanda Brewer, who is now their assistant principal. Um, it's called the Two Bucket Garden. It, in using, uh, the focus is using systems thinking to investigate where food comes from. So students in this lesson, um, they construct their own self-watering container system to grow edible plants. They address issues related to system thinking while participating in food production. And they develop a more realistic view of the food system while teaching important concepts of sustainability. The urban relevance here is, uh, this is what the teacher wrote for that section. The closest that many young people living in cities get to the origins of their food is the local grocery store. Being so far removed from agricultural operations, they may have a hard time truly appreciating the complex web of processes and relationships that bring food to their table. So they learn that a sustainable food system encourages local production and distribution and ensures that nutritious food is affordable and accessible to all. Um, the symbols for this lesson are farm to table and community and sustainability. So again, if you could quickly get a sense of where this lesson is going to go and what they can address with it. A series of activities here as well, uh, including an introduction to systems thinking, that all systems have inputs and outputs and all systems need the support of other systems to operate. So a little bit of science and social science there. Um, this is a really hands-on construction-based project because the students get to actually build the self-watering container. Um, they choose and plant the crops they're going to use and the importance of crop diversity is stressed here. So you, again, you have the important concepts of ecology and permaculture at work. And finally, incorporating ideas of looking at global and local food systems. Um, teaching students and, and helping them develop the skills of being critical thinkers about food, food production, their own neighborhoods, the availability of food in their neighborhoods, and the complexities of food production and why there's so much more involved than just going to a local bodega or grocery store and grabbing what you need. Unique school, tucked in a neighborhood, um, but the school itself the campus is just really extraordinary. They have a, a small farm of their own, uh, less elaborate than common ground. Uh, but the whole school is really, you know, it's just it's part of the classroom, um, the way that they develop the campus and, and use the community that they're in really makes it a very holistic um, overall learning environment. We also wanted to include a section on citizen science in the urban environment. Citizen science is such a powerful tool um, for authentic science learning, where uh, if, you're, if you're not too familiar with citizen science, it's just the basic idea that anybody can be part of a scientific, scientific process and scientific data collection by just being out there in their communities or, or wherever they live and collecting data that scientists can use to um, do the work that they're doing. So if you're out and you see a, um, a particular bird species that you've never seen before in your park, you might call up the Cornell Lab of Ornithology and say, hey, you know, I, I saw this bird today in, in Brooklyn, New York, and I didn't know that they were here. And uh, a person from the Cornell ecology, uh, Ornithology Lab might say, wow, thanks, we didn't know that either. Now we'll add that to our data. Um, 
And then that person just was a citizen scientist. So students can be suited student scientists and it's a great way for them to get involved in real data collection for real scientists. So this lesson is called Invasive Species Tracking, developed by Jennifer Dean of the New York Natural Heritage Project. And students learn about the ecological threats caused by invasive species and take action by surveying for invasives in their community. They use spatial technology. They use a, a, an online tool called IMAP Invasive. Um, and they collect data. And then they send that data to scientists in their state who are collecting data about this issue. Uh, this one particularly focuses on the Asian longhorn beetle, which is an invasive pest that is affecting trees in New York City and other areas in the Northeast. So students collect the data in a sheet like the one that's there, and they submit that data to scientists. Um, and we know we just really feel like citizen science in the urban environment is such an important thing because uh, these lessons and activities help reinforce that environmental science happens in the city. Um, this is you know, there's kind of a stereotype, I think, of environmental scientists that work, that they're out in non-urban areas and they're sitting in uh, tall grass with a notebook and they're watching uh, antelope prance across a grassland or something. And, you know, a, a student who lives in, an, in a city might think that that's really cool, um, but may not be able to see a pathway to that, um, to that being part of their life just because it's such a a foreign visual. Um, so citizen science in the urban environment gives students the opportunities to do that kind of cool work right in their communities and their neighborhoods and to see uh, maybe a more realistic pathway to a career like that. So here are some pictures of students doing some citizen science work in, uh, in New York City and in New Haven, Connecticut. Um, the anthology closes with um, a section featuring some articles that are sort of reflections about urban environmental education and why it's important. Um, some ideas, some project ideas, some lesson ideas, some, some really touching and, and um, thought-provoking stories of students um, encountering nature in their cities uh, and how unique that, that can sometimes be. And just a quick overview of some other lessons. Um, I think there are about 25 lessons in the anthology, but here are just some, some other topics that are covered. Um, so you can get a sense of what else is in there. And there's actually you know, much more than that even, but I just wanted to give you a, a little bit of an idea. So again, you know, this, the, the lessons offer students the opportunity to learn um, to, to develop their science skills, their social science skills, uh, math has worked in here. Um, they're able to uh, use spatial technology, um, really, really neat stuff. Some of the lessons focus on what they can, on, on projects that they can do right in their school that help the school community and then as an offshoot help their larger neighborhood. Um, so it's really, we think it's really a unique, uh, a unique take on the uh, environmental education curriculum landscape. Now, just briefly, I wanted to mention another um, another uh, initiative that the Nature Conservancy has developed called Nature Works Everywhere, bringing nature into the classroom. Um, this uh, is a website that uh, helps students learn the science behind how nature works and how to help keep nature running strong by giving teachers, students, and families educational tools that align with national standards. So teachers can find free lesson plans here videos on conservation science um, and videos on how nature works for, for us. And, and those lessons are available at natureworkseverywhere.org. These lessons are designed for middle school, but they are, um, they're really high level lessons, I think, for middle school. So I think they could very easily be adapted to uh, high school as well. These lessons come with a little more bells and whistles than the uh, anthology lessons. The anthology lessons are just uh, straightforward um, PDF downloads. These lessons are a little more interactive. They come with a PowerPoint presentation and a video as well as a lesson plan. Uh, we wanted to be sure that both, both initiatives, the anthology and the um, and Nature, Ever, Nature Works Everywhere aligned to national and state learning standards. 
uh, including the Common Core, the Next Generation Science Standards, and also um, the NAAAE Excellence in Environmental Education Guidelines for Learning, K-12. So we went through lesson by lesson, and we, um, where a lesson addressed a standard, um, we made, you know, we were able to make that connection. The Next Generation Science Standards came out after some of the lessons were developed. So we went back and we found where the new, these new standards matched up um, in certain, in certain other, in, in particular lessons. So that's pretty much it. Um, for, if you want to learn more, if you want more information um, about both LEAF or Nature Works Everywhere, uh, you can contact me regarding anything uh, in terms of LEAF. And the, and, the, and the LEAF Educators Network and um, uh, the LEAF program, the internship program for students. Uh, and if you wanted to learn more about Nature Works Everywhere, you could also contact me, but the uh, Angela Brisson is uh, she's the director of that program. And I'll just leave you with this, this quote um, that I think just really nicely captures uh, what the mission of uh, both of these initiatives is about. This comes from our uh, the Nature Conservancy Chief, uh, Nature Conservancy's Chief Scientist Peter Kuriva. And uh, with that, I think I will I will end.